Welcome back to the last door. We've arrived at the broken lighthouse, so let's take a look around and see if we can fix it. Because we need its light to illuminate something at the old ruins. A drip of water, left unchecked, has ruined the mantle and collected into a small pool. A few logs and cords of firewood. A portrait of a bearded ship's captain, done in oils. The varnish has darkened his features considerably. I should like to visit the, light, the lightroom now, if I may. Yes, yes. You already has my... You already has my permission? I don't know if that's a misspelling or if it's just meant to be read with like a certain accent. But now I'm just imagining like, I can has cheeseburger. You already has my permissions. I'm guessing this thing needs a cog. And probably some oiling. It looks like the lighthouse's electric lamp battery slot. Looks like the lamp is powered by an electric battery. However, the battery is flat. No surprise there. Perhaps we can find a way to recharge the battery. Hmm. The lighthouse's lamp, surrounded by eight large lenses. It is off. The clockwork mechanism that causes the lamp's reflectors to spin. However, I think that something is missing. It could do with some oiling as well. I think you need a cog. The cog was a missing piece of the mechanism. I have replaced it. However, the mechanism is still too rusty to move. Alright, let's oil it. There's a little hole in the tank and the oil is leaking. The mechanism will not work properly unless I fix it. Oh. Mm, can I maybe shove this ribbon into the, the hole? Now I can oil the mechanism without worrying for it leaking. Okay, perfect. Feels good to clear up my inventory. There we go. Alright, so that part's working, but it still needs power. So, where in the hell am I going to charge a battery? I'm trying to think if I've seen anything electric on the island, like, at all. Uh, maybe it's just recharged just by passively sitting in my inventory, right? Dang. A thick layer of mist covers the sea out there. It cannot be! I never thought I would hear the rhythm of my beloved lighthouse working again. You don't know how grateful I am. For years I've longed to hear those marvelous sounds. Memories of better times. Well, you're welcome. It's still not working, though. But, you're welcome. I don't think there's any point in going up here, but... Let's check. Nope. You know what, I bet I know where I can charge this battery. Probably at the mill, right? Or maybe with a bicycle or something? Maybe that's why I repaired it. Yeah, that probably is it. Now that the bicycle is fixed, 
If I attach one of its cogs to the battery's dynamo, I may be able to provide it with a charge. Aha! I don't think it works like that, but awesome. It's charged. And it certainly would not charge that quickly. I mean... Yeah, wait a minute, what? I don't... I don't get it. How can this single battery supply all the... This... I don't understand. How can this battery supply enough power to light the lighthouse? I mean, just imagine, like, this is... Maybe around the size of a car battery, right? And this is a, quite a long time ago. This isn't set in modern day. So this is old battery technology, right? It's not even modern battery technology. It's old battery technology around the size of a car battery. And if you just leave your freaking headlights on, like, overnight, or I think even probably if you leave your dome light on inside your car overnight, you can drain the entire battery. So what charges this thing? Like, there's no way... With the amount of light this thing has to put out? Like, 50 times, 100 times the strength of a car's headlights? I'm assuming so, at least. I'm assuming it's a lot more powerful than a car's headlights. With that amount of power, this battery wouldn't last, like, any time at all. Hopefully the battery has enough charge to keep the lighthouse lit for a few hours. Look, even if this was a modern, like, the most modern lighthouse ever made, and it had, like, full LED, super efficient lights, even in that case, there's no way a battery charged by moving a bicycle's, like, you know, spinning a bicycle for, like, five seconds would provide, it, would provide enough charge to light it for a few hours. There's no way! That's not even in the realm of reasonable. Whoops. Awesome. The lighthouse is working properly again. With luck, its light will now help me find the murals, mural in the old abbey. <laughs> and now this is burning. Great. This wicker man has been set on fire too. Who keeps doing this? The rope gave way just as I passed. Oh, that's awesome! Even the map shows the lighthouse working. That's really cool. The light has revealed a mural painting on the stones, just as it did for Brigid nearly a century ago. Or Brigid? Brigid? I've forgotten how I've even pronounced her name now, let alone whether it was even right in the first place. According to the diary, the light from the lighthouse revealed the eyes of the sentinel. Oh, right here. A pair of evil eyes seemed to glitter in the dark. The mouth of the sentinel is wide open. Okay, wide open as if it's, what, waiting to accept something? Only thing is, I don't actually have anything left in my inventory. I've used everything. Yeah, what am I supposed to do now? I think she said use the stone disc, right? I don't have the stone disc. Have I just completely missed where the stone disc is? Uh-oh. I think I'm stuck. Yep. 
Yeah, I think I'm kind of screwed. I think I'm a little bit screwed. I'm gonna take a look around and see if I can find something. Hmm. It looks like maybe I actually can dig up what the people buried here now. Tempting fate here. I'm not too sure about this. Yeah, I'm really not. I guess, um... I guess I'm doing what that, that guy said, right? Didn't he say it's so easy to prove it all? Fake? Dig up the mirrors? Something about sap of the tree as well? Although, I don't have any tool to actually get it at sap. Okay, I dug it up. I guess I'm not actually going to take it, though. Just, just dug it up. What else did he mention to do? I don't remember. Whoa. What was that? Wait. Was that the mirrors breaking? Somebody's a little troublemaker. The mirrors are completely shattered. Why would that masked man do this? Seems to be heading east. Maybe Kieran. Because you're going to where Kieran lives. Yeah, now you've opened the door. So is that Kieran? Because Kieran might be the sort of person who would shatter the mirrors. Because Kieran doesn't believe in all that stuff. Ornate levers built into the wall. Kieran, what the hell have you been up to in here? Jesus. This is what you do in your spare time? Celestial bodies made out of paper. A doll's theater lamp spinning around. A painted man-sized wooden doll. It represents an old lady. This one represents a king. Oh, Kieran! You don't look like you're a person in the shape of Kieran. Kieran was a young boy. You look slumped over like an old man or some sort of a frog creature. The stranger's mask is lying on the floor. Was that supposed to scare me? I mean, I, it's not like I didn't see the mask. Something is underneath the mask. Oh, it's a stone disc. An old iron disc. A drawing of a spiked circle is engraved on it. I can hear something wandering in the dark. I can see a deformed shadow in there, writhing and fidgeting. I... I cannot... I cannot get any closer. Sure you can, just walk towards it. It's right there. Okay, bye. You're on fire, too. I get now the statue is burning, too. Is someone following me? Yes. Someone's definitely following me.
The hidden entrance is open now. The symbol looks familiar. A spiked circle. It could be the sun. A statue of a Madonna, but something is off. I cannot tell what it is. Oh god. The tunnel descends deep into the earth. Will I find the late send crypt at the bottom, or something? Dear god, I'm reeling. Kaufman, my friend. Your faith in me was misplaced. I cannot. No. I will persevere. This is the late Send family crypt. There's all the bodies. A small coffin half rotted away. This one's covered in ashes. This coffin does not look quite as old as the others. Hmm. These indentations may have once supported a structure of some kind, though there's nothing left of it now. There's the sun symbol. Some old pages lie haphazardly on the coffin lid. It is as though they had been dropped here from the upper hill long ago. They bear faint notes written in a trembling hand. Down in this unholy burrow, in the feared crone maiden, our worst nightmares crawl and die. Resting down here are the Dauntless, those who dared enter the lair of the snake and the bird. Each of those men and women crossed the path between. They walked through the mist to the other side, where the ultimate truth screams in terror. And then they returned. These are my ancestors. Amongst the dead stones of the Crone Maiden lie the proud Laidsend, reduced to something far worse than dust or ashes. Could that blasphemy in the coffin be Aunt Mare's true legacy? No. I shall not accept this fate for myself. What's in the coffin? The engraving on the coffin is so badly eroded that the name is barely readable. Mare Latesend. That wasn't human. What's happening? Oh, wait. I can... I can move. Somebody closed over it. Somebody's trying to trap me in here. Seekers of truth will sacrifice their wisdom. So to open the way to where the fear nog blooms. Where are these words coming from? Are these just thoughts in my head? Or is somebody saying them to me? Your offspring we welcome its hidden threat. Only the light of your sign will carry its purge. something in the mist.
Dev it. Don't tell me that's the end of the episode. Okay, it looks like it isn't. <laughs> oh no, it is! <gasps> oh! I saw I could still move my mouse, so I thought there was. Oh! Dang. That was a short episode. I think that's one of the shortest. That was like uh, about an hour and a half, actually. Hmm. <laughs> and there's the hole. The big hole that has now been covered over. What does clicking this button do? Does that open up a window in a web browser? I think it... maybe it does. Or apparently it does nothing. It's just a button. I mean, I guess not all buttons have to lead somewhere, right? Sure, why not? <laughs> Alright. So that has been The Last Door Season 2, Episode 3. And as it says, apparently the next episode is the season finale. Of course, it continues this tradition of ending on a huge cliffhanger. And, um, honestly, I still don't really get exactly how we got from the end of the last episode to the beginning of this one with the whole creature portal thing. Like, I thought there was no way to escape other than what seemed like a portal. And somehow, he jumped in the water. I don't know how that worked. They smoothed over that, but whatever. He escaped. That's fine. But, uh, yeah, the game continues to be creepy. Sometimes it feels like it's trying too hard to be creepy. But it still continues to be creepy. And it still continues to have really good sound design for the most part. And... I like the little details, too. Like, once you activate the lighthouse, you can see the lighthouse even on the, the map. And you can just see it, like, when it's in the background, you can see it's now lit. That's really cool. The fact that you can see a reflection in that pool of water that I was looking at. Where I got the umbrella from. Little details like that are really, really cool. And the puzzles... I feel like... I want to say the puzzles seemed better in this episode than in previous episodes. I don't know if that's true. It might just be that I'm getting more used to the game's... Like... I'm getting more used to how the game does puzzles, so it's getting easier to do them. And they're going smoother because of that. I feel like that might be it more than that the puzzles are getting better. Because the puzzles are still not... In some ways, they're still not that good. You know, I got stuck a few times and had to cut the episode and just go kind of aimlessly look around for stuff to do. Um, I had to do that a few times. It never got too long or particularly bad, but... A lot of the puzzles seem to, just as in previous episodes, kind of rely upon just doing stuff and then... Like, that triggers some invisible script that you have no way of knowing got triggered, and then you just have to go back to some old place that you've been to before and just hope that something has changed. And that shows up in this episode as well, where you just go back to a place you've been before and now something's different, right? Like, you go back to where the person um, took you to the island was, where his boat was, and now there's a message in a bottle. Right? Uh... I'm totally blanking on the other instances, but there were a bunch of other instances where you go back and something's changed, like go back to the tree and all the people are now gone. And you can now open up the grave. And it turns out that opening up the, the grave, or the hole rather, reveals the glass. But then you don't actually do anything with the glass. Then you have to leave. And then you hear a noise. And then you have to come back. And that triggers the person showing up. And then you have to follow the person. And that opens the door. It's like really, you know, some of the connections between these puzzles and the stuff you need to do to, like, start a puzzle. It isn't really there, it's kind of just like wander around until you stumble into something. So it can be a little bit frustrating. Not the greatest puzzle design. Definitely not the greatest, but it's not terrible either. A lot of the things you do are just, you know, pretty straightforward and logical. Like, you get a sharp thing that can poke into wood so you use it on the barrel. You know, that's fine. Although... You don't actually know it's in the barrel, so there's no particular reason to think, you know, you need to go into the barrel for the oil needed to, oh, you know, needed to oil the machine. 
so there's still like logical connections missing. There's definitely still logical connections missing. The more I think about it. But at the same time, you can kind of somewhat get around that just by knowing that you have to wander everywhere and you have to go back to places you've been before and just knowing to basically do the adventure game thing of use everything on everything, right? You get, you get a thing for wood, use it on wood stuff and hope it does something. Of course, you shouldn't have to, you know, the puzzle should be more tightly connected than that. But it's not terrible. For an adventure game, which notoriously have really terrible puzzles, I would say it's above average in the puzzle department. And the sound design is definitely above average, way above average. So yeah, The Last Door continues to be a pretty damn well made and creepy adventure game series. So I hope you enjoyed watching me play through it, and of course as soon as the season finale comes out, I will play it. Thank you for watching.